we should tell as well of how a poisoned rat betrayed the killing of a noble lord and liegeman, how a serum smith by milling iron wheels to cogs and pinions made a monumental ticker clicking oh so slow the hours to call to service clerk and vicar now when you walks in our cathedral tis the most natural thing in the world to look directly up at the arches your eyes certainly do it almost unbidden and then you think straightway of exploring further into the building but it's easy to walk straight past two at least of the most interesting things The vast is there right, over by the north wall of the aisle, a girt clock's movement, so high as a man, and near as wide as you can reach across. This clock were originally housed in the separate bell tower, as once stood out on the north lawns of the cathedral close, a tower near two hundred feet high, housing a full peal of bells and thick clock controlled a strike for each hour so's they knew when they should come into their services it's closely related to the one at wells cathedral but a little simpler and a little earlier and they reckons it were made about 1386 all out of hand wrought iron so if you looks at the wheels cogs and the verge escapement on it well a man may be better still than a blacksmith made that thing to go together and work when James Wyatt come here to pull down the bell tower in about 1790, thick clock movement were put up in the cathedral tower to chime the hours there, until 1884, when a fine modern chime clock escapement were put in to sound Westminster chimes each quarter of an hour. Then the old clock were just left up there in the roofs and ignored for some years, until rediscovered in 1929, when it were put in this position in the nave aisle, though it weren't working then. And finally in 1956, the friends of the cathedral funded its restoration with newly wrought parts, so that it still so quietly moves, clicks and marks time among the changing noises of the modern cathedral. Something else that only happened in comparatively modern times were the discovery of what may be killed the Earl of Salisbury, who died in 1225 and were buried under one of the finest early tombs in the cathedral. William Longespay, or Longsword as we Welcher vote called him, were one of Henry II's very many illegitimate children, a sort of half-brother to the later King John, for whom he served faithfully as the Sheriff of Wiltshire, Constable of Dover, and the Lord Warden of the Sink Ports. William were staying at Salisbury Castle in 1225 when he died, some do say, by poison, perhaps administered by Hubert de Burr, who were seen as too favoured of young King Henry by many. How strange, then, when William Longsword's tomb in the cathedral were investigated in 1791, a well-preserved rat were found lodged in his skull, and containing traces of arsenic, too. Longsword's effigy and wooden box tomb are just along in the south aisle of the cathedral, and were possibly designed by Elias of Dereham. It were probably the vast tomb built in the new cathedral. <laughs> 